Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're doing a watercolor painting and this will be my last painting for the year in uh, 2019. Um, we're doing a repeat from the painting I did uh, in oil last week. Um, so I'm going to try to show you the difference between how I do it in oil and how you need to do it in watercolor. Uh, we're working on some uh, 11 by 14 Fabriano Artistico paper, 300 pound Normally I work on cold press, but um, this paper happens to be hot press, uh, which I didn't really order. I had a mix-up order that uh, was wrong from the factory, and so uh, Dick Blick did a very good job in making it right for me. But I'm going to try to see if I can do a watercolor on, uh, on uh, this hot press paper, which is vertical, and so it's going to make it even a little more difficult uh, to do it. But uh, you'll see, uh, see me struggle, and uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll make a good painting, maybe we won't. I don't know. But anyway, I want to uh, tell you about the photo again. It's uh, Calgary Mountains in uh, Alberta, Canada, and it's from a Facebook photo that uh, Tricia Rawson provided through the Photos for Artists uh, group on Facebook. And uh, so there's a lot of good photographers out there making uh, photos available for artists to use and uh, with no restrictions. So anyway, if you get a chance, you're looking for something to paint, looking for inspiration, just check out that face, uh, Photos for Artists uh, group on Facebook. Okay, so I think I've got everything ready to go here. I got my cameras going. I'm not broadcasting today. Um, this is an extra painting just for the end of the year. So I want to take you through my uh, paints and brushes and uh, I'll show you that now. <clears throat> so here we have my Sterling Edwards palette with my uh, set of Sterling Edwards brushes. I have the uh, large, medium, and small big bristle brushes that I like to use. They're really good for certain types of effects. I have uh, a few, couple of flats here, a one inch, half inch flat. I have uh, three rounds, a, a 12, 8, and a 4. And I have a little script liner number six. So I don't know if I'll use all those brushes. Um, I don't know what I'll use exactly as we go on. I, I do have a color uh, pattern here with my uh, photographs up here that we can uh, look at to get some reference colors. Um, and let me go through the paints with you here. Now here's the uh, uh, this this palette has a set of Holbein paints in it, and uh, they're all nice transparent watercolors. This is Payne's Gray. This is Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep, Royal Blue, Permanent Violet, Green Gray, Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, Bright Rose, Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep, and Cad Yellow Lemon. So that's the set of paints. Um, I'm not going to wet this entire uh, paint painting today or what the entire paper today like I normally do wet and wet on uh, on this. I do want to zoom in and get myself aligned here with the uh, uh, palette so that I can have this uh, so I can edit it properly and make it so everybody can see it. Let me get lined up here uh, a little bit like this. There we go. All right, I think that's pretty good. Everybody can see that. <laughs> So again, I've got a sketch on here, a rough sketch of the uh, <clears throat> of the mountains. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, kneaded eraser here and just sort of take out some of this uh, graphite marks that I have here from the sketch, just so I don't have a lot of those showing up in the uh, final uh, painting. A lot of this is going to be covered with dark paint, so I'm not too worried about it. But where I have the snow. Uh, this glacier type snow coming down. I don't want it to uh, uh, show a lot of pencil marks in there. Pencil marks can be good, but uh, I tend to uh, uh, I tend to try to take them out uh, somewhat if I can still see the outline of the sketch and know what I'm doing. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. Let me. Uh, get some paint on this brush. I'm going to use just a little water in the sky, even though I said I'm not going to wait to wet the whole paper down. I'm going to wet the sky a little bit just so I have some nice soft um, sky up here that I can uh, let that paint run a little bit. This paper, again, it is 300 pounds, it says, 300 pound paper. Um, it is soaking up water pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to wet that. That's going to be my sky. 
and I'm going to use a little more sky color than is in this photograph. The photograph basically has uh, little or no <clears throat> little or no uh, color in it. Uh, so I'm going to use my blue. Uh, I meant to use my cobalt blue, but either one will work. And I'm just going to put in some nice coloring here over this over this area. It's uh, drying out already very fast. It soaks up this water faster than uh, some of the faster than the uh, cold press does actually. I'm going to put just a little bit of a tone in here above this uh, where the snow goes right here like this and there okay um, a little bit of run there um, <clears throat> so that's a nice pretty soft edge I'm going to leave that little thing that looks like a looks like a cloud there I'm going to just sort of take out a little more here maybe make a few more marks that soften some edges um, so we don't have real hard edges in there around that cloud and I think that's going to do it. Uh, the rest of them will leave dry right now. <clears throat> okay, so got the big uh, snow coming down here. I'm going to try to leave that pretty much white for the most part. Um, but up here in the top where I've got the uh, this mountain in the background, I'm going to try to make it sort of a grayish blue gray color. I'm using cobalt blue and my, uh, my uh, burnt sienna here to get a sort of a bluish green color steel actually I'm trying to make it a little more gray um, and um, so I'll put a little more blue in there so if you mix a brown and a blue you'll get a gray so let's see what we can do back here in this area I'm using a one inch big one inch brush here and uh, over this way come down Leave some spots for some snow. Uh, we have some snow down here. Uh, maybe put just a tad more brown in some of that to kind of change up the color just a little. And as we come down here, we sort of get into some snow again. So let's put it in. Probably leaving more snow in here than uh, was in the uh, <clears throat> in the other in the original, either in the photograph or uh, in my oil painting uh, last week. Um, there is some snow that runs across here. I'm going to leave a little place for that. All right. Um, I don't need to do too much more. That's going to dry a little bit lighter, of course. You should know that by now. Uh, and in here, I'm just going to soften some of these edges to let it sort of leave some snow in there. Um, put a touch of a, a little touch of a yellow or orange color in there to kind of get it uh, look like there might be some sun shining on it in some areas. Um, but pretty much just clear white paper with some like this. Okay, now we got just another little, I'm going to use a little, my uh, Payne's gray here to get a little darker, more of a grayish color coming down in here. Let's see, that's all white through there. A little bit of a thing going across here like that. So just some snow that's sort of packed down, I guess, the bottom of this mountain. There we go. Um, comes down like this. Okay. Spread it across. <coughs> Make it just a little darker, I think, at the bottom because it is uh, catching a little less sun and uh, it's where the bottom of all this mountain rocks and debris have sort of fallen. Okay. So we've got our sky in, we got our uh, distant mountain in. Um, I don't know if I want to touch just a little more blue in that or not. Let me see here. What it, 
just, I'm going to be careful here. Something like that to give it just a little more texture in there. Can't even see that hardly, probably. I have a monitor here behind me I'm watching just to uh, make sure I can see what's going on uh, in the final edit of the video. Okay, so now let's come over and start on these mountains over here. I'm going to put just a little more red in those, a little bit of the alizarin uh, quinacridone scarlet. I want to call it alizarin crimson. It's not really that. <clears throat> and mix that with a little bit of my Payne's Gray and maybe a little bit of Ultra Blue. So we're going to get sort of a bluish um, lavender type color here for these mountains. They have to be darker than what's behind it, so I don't want to make, I want to make sure I don't have... A, I'm going to put some trees over that so that doesn't bother me there. Pull these down into this area here. Change the color a little bit, add something into it to make it change just a little, uh, if we can. Seeing the uh, watermark there showing up, it says Fabriano right here. To me, that's a true piece of watercolor paper. Put some marks here that's going to kind of outline this tree on this side, both sides. I've got a tree. Make sure I have this covered all the way down here. All right, <clears throat> so I'm painting negatively now behind behind these uh, green trees that are going to come down here. This area here, I've got some more rockiness and um, some blue in there a little bit. Make it the blue will kind of push it back a little bit. It's probably too much. I'm over here. Let's turn it in. Get some in here like this. There we go. So this uh, cold press paper reacts really differently than the, the I'm sorry, the hot press paper works differently than the cold press. Uh, I gotta say, uh, when I bought this, I was really not happy. I thought that Dick Blick had screwed up, and it turns out that. Uh, they did not screw up. Um, it was the uh, factory in uh, <clears throat> wherever the uh, Fabriano has a place where they put uh, these little packs of four sheets together, four uh, four sheets of cold pressed paper, whatever, and uh, somehow they had actually mixed it up so that the uh, paper they were putting in was not really cold press. And the only way I could tell was uh, look at the. Uh, indentations on the paper and uh, I could tell that the um, quit talking here for a second um, I could tell that the uh, indentations weren't there this is a really a smooth paper when I run the brush over it, you can see there's no uh, no bumps and dimple, dimples and that sort of stuff it just sort of uh, uh, is flat so I took several photos of my paper and sent it in and got a quality control guy and uh, at uh, the company to uh, look into it. He went out in the warehouse and finally saw that they had a apparently like a whole shipment uh, that had been uh, mislabeled I guess or maybe mis uh, installed or selected somehow they had uh, they basically had uh, something wrong in their factory that put this stuff together and uh, so they were shipping out and selling what they thought was cold press paper and it turns out it had no dimples and it was really hot press so I was really happy to see how proactive the uh, <clears throat> company was to uh, work with me uh, take my pictures and get a quality control inspector go out into their warehouse and dig these things out and look them up and see if <laughs> what was wrong and sure enough uh, they found a, a problem and uh, they fixed it. They shipped me extra extra uh, packages of paper and didn't uh, didn't complain. Uh, after about the second time I came back and said well you're still sh shipping me the same stuff. Um, <laughs> they uh, 
they actually went back and uh, looked at it and found that it was definitely uh, a problem and researched their history and found out that Fabriano had had this problem once before. That kind of made my case that more legitimate, I guess. I'm putting just a little uh, bit of a light color up here. I'm going to kind of indicate that's some kind of dirty snow or that. I'm not sure it's even snow. I think it's the uh, mountain up there that's uh, it's just kind of a sandy, rocky surface. All right, I'll get back to thinking about painting here and stop talking about my paper. But uh, maybe you can see how this is acting a little differently than maybe my um, other... I'm just going to cover this in. I'm going to cover that with some green anyway, so let's... Don't get too uh, carried away with trying to paint negatively around these. Got some trees and stuff I'm going to put in down here. Okay, it's going to time to come over to this other side now and start building up this mountain on the other side. I'm going to get a little of my permanent violet in there for this one. And uh, I'll just start going up. Let's see here, about right in here maybe. There's a pretty good section of white snow right in here. Kind of left that. Okay. And then up here there's another nice grayed out section, I guess it is. Kind of runs underneath snow over here and goes over that way. Up there has some snow spots in it. <clears throat> sort of comes out here. Kind of leaving room for the snow. I'm not painting the snow, but when I get done, you're going to see that that looks like snow. Okay. Um, I want to get some soft edges in here. This has all been pretty hard edge so far, so I'm going to take some clear water on a, one of my round brushes to sort of tickle the end of this, the bottom of this, and sort of give it some soft edges here and there, maybe a few soft edges up here. Painting wet on dry, you see how that's taking a hard edge very quickly. If I had wet that paper down, it might have uh, not taken that so quickly. That's okay, I'm uh, kind of experimenting here anyway with this hot press paper. I haven't uh, done that before. Over here, I'm going to put a few more things in to kind of tone that down, make it look a little bit more like vertical uh, things happening over there. All right. Now, is that all of this? Uh, it comes down here. Let me put a few more. It really is these two mountains sort of two areas that kind of run together. I'll just put a little water in there and let them sort of fuse together like that. All right, and put a few more spots in here. Some other areas where we might have some rockiness, I don't know. Don't want it to be um, smooth. It's certainly not a smooth surface. All right. Um, now I've got this other big mountain over here I want to start building. And uh, it's going to have more, more brown. And uh, so I'm going to get my umber out. Um, and we'll start using that. Mixing a little blue with it. It'll kind of turn gray, I guess, a little bit. Add some burnt, burnt sienna in there, umber. And we're going to make this really darker, much darker here. And the reason for that is, you know, because this is closer, right? <laughs> Put a little uh, Payne's Gray in there. And let's let it just sort of slide down the mountain here. Okay, I'm leaving some snow on it. There was really actually in the photograph there wasn't 
much snow on this part of the mountain at all, but I'm going to leave some there just to uh, kind of tie it together. And as it comes down here, it starts angling out this way, coming down and making some areas that it's really shadow, dark shadow. But um, I'm going to put some snow in there as well, so it looks like we have snow going as well on this part. Okay, mix the colors up, mix the textures up, get some, I was talking about getting some rough edge. If I try to pull this fast, it gets almost no rough bumpy edges because the paper is so smooth. That's how I know it's not cold press. Almost nothing. It's really hard to get any kind of a textured mark with this paper. So I made my case. Okay, let's put a little more grit down a little bit in here. There's a lot of rock and and uh, sandy stuff down here that uh, kind of at the bottom of this mountain. I think leaving this extra snow in here is going to be better um, than uh, trying to make it all one color. Let's come back and put a few more things. Anything I put in, I want to try to hit this angle of this dirt coming down like that. All right. So now this is all going to be sort of, it goes down to a beach. There's actually water here and I've got a lot of trees and stuff in the background, so let me get some more of this color I'm going to use for my uh, <clears throat> sort of my sandy beach, if you will. It's not really, I guess it's sandy. It's got to be stuff that uh, these trees are growing in down here at the bottom. But as we get down to the mountain, we're getting into areas that are up against the water down here. And this goes back quite a bit of it going here like this and goes back actually back pretty far back behind here there we go all right that's that piece of land uh, I've got this other piece over here that's gonna stick out like this and this is what all these trees over here on the left side are going to be connected to So this is going to be water in the middle. I want that water to show up behind. I want it to show up behind this little peninsula that sticks out here. All right, <clears throat> we're making pretty good progress. Um, this is all greenery here. There's trees back here, some grass. All right, I think let me put just a little more dark here at the bottom while I got this big brush, got this kind of wet. Let both of these areas down a little bit in some areas to uh, show they've got a little base on them where they touch the water. Something like that. All right. I think I got some rocks over here I'm going to put in maybe later. Um, but let's work with that. Um, these things here look too, too perfect. Um, they're clones of each other, and they uh, need to be fixed. I don't want them to look like they're just all perfectly measured apart. I should have made them different sizes and put them different widths apart. That's a compositional thing that we talk about very often. But I notice this paint is not lifting nearly as well as it does on the cold press paper. I kind of wanted to lift some of that out. It doesn't want to be lifted. So when you, uh, even with these brushes that are kind of a bristle-like, very heavy, you hear me scraping there probably. It's just not lifting. Interesting. Okay. Well. At least this shows you what you can do with cold pressed paper, which uh, you may not like. <clears throat> All right, let's see. I'm going to work on these trees now. I'm going to get my uh, half inch 
flat brush and we're going to start getting some uh, some paint. I'm going to use my big brush to get some paint out here in the palette to get this gray green color um, which is similar to a sap green but I think it's got more gray in it than sap green. Um, take some of my ultra blue put it up here some of my uh, permanent violet and put it up here all right, and then I'm going to add some yellows in here. I can add both of my yellows if I want. I'm going to use this lemon yellow to uh, get some of the highlights on these trees on the left. And uh, that'll work for that. And then I'm going to use the blue here. I'm going to mix the blue and the green and get the darker color I want. Maybe you put a little uh, Payne's Gray in there to gray that down. Back here in the distance, I want these trees to be very... Uh, kind of dark. They're in the shadow of this mountain anyway. So I'm just doing my thing with this flat brush making these trees look small and tiny back here because they are in this distance. So I'm going to put a whole you know, they come all the way over to this tree all the way over here. So I'm going to put these in and uh, try to keep them dark and blue, more blue dark blue. The further back they are, they should be bluer, blacker. All right. Um, and I'll let some of that dry. Come down with some green. There is some green starting over here, right in this area here. Is that, while that's wet, I can get a good uh, base on it there and get it to sort of blend with what's on the... I'm going to let this snow and this green greenery sort of kind of mingle together here. Doesn't look super green on the camera from what I can tell, but I'm just letting it happen, whatever it wants to do here. some more green stuff going on here. Something like this that I want it to uh, sort of fit in. I want it to look like it's coming down and leveling out. So that's the reason for my brush strokes are now horizontal instead of like this. When I go up the mountain, I want the brush strokes to go that way. When I'm at the bottom, I want them to be flat. Okay, picking up on that. All right, let's put a few more darker trees in front of these other trees here. Um, myself, because this it's drying out very fast. I don't know if it's because my room here has got low humidity in it, uh, or if it's just the way this paper is reacting to my paints. I don't know. But you can give it a try if you want and leave me some ideas of how it works for you in the comments to this video. All right, I don't want a straight line across here. I want that to be varied. I want these trees to be, even though they are almost all identical, I would guess, <laughs> I want to give them some variation here. Um, I want some more of them over here. Well, they're getting bigger. I'm going to put those in in a minute. Let's stop with that right there. Okay, so now I have a nice little set of trees going up the mountain. Uh, put a few dark bases on the bottom. And uh, let these, some of them, by, if you touch it with wet water, with uh, water, water is wet, uh, it'll sort of blend them in so it doesn't look like they're uh, glued on. All right, so all this is going to have trees over this going on this peninsula. And we're going to put the big ones here, but I want to put these in over here now. So I'm going to use almost the same colors. Maybe change a little bit, add a little more ochre color in it uh, over here. And uh, still use my gray-green, use my uh, blues, use my violets. And uh, get a good mixture um, of some of these. And they kind of, they come all the way down to the water. So let's start like right here. So 
So these are pretty light, pretty small. Get small as they go back there. They get larger here because they're going up the mountain. So let's put a few of those here. <coughs> they should be represented as even much larger than what's back here. Back in the distance, these should be larger. So let's try to do that. It's just a whole field of pine trees back here. So blues and purples and greens. So I'm not trying to make perfect trees, I'm trying to make an impressionistic pattern out of these trees so you can see that they're changing color, changing width, uh, changing about anything I can think of while I'm in there to uh, make it represent what's going on back here. More brown, more uh, gray rather. A few of these sticking up so they look like they're taller. Get some more dark at the bottom. And they dry so fast over here, I can come back and put another layer over this already. Um, I think I want them to be a little even bigger than that. They're, they look kind of, they look kind of like the same size as what's back in the distance here. So they are, they are bigger, but um, I'm going to make a few of them stand out and uh, put some dark on top. Take that uh, Payne's gray and drop in some dark darks at the bottom in some of these areas. It will make these stand out even better. One of the things I always got <clears throat> criticized for when I take watercolor workshops is I don't have enough dark in my painting. These darks really make make a painting sing. Okay, Let's see here, blues, purples, green. <clears throat> While I'm doing this, I'm gonna I want them to kind of go down this way, a little smaller as they get away, because this looks like it's kind of going away from us a little bit. Um, but uh, while this is wet, I'm going to put in a few scrapes. Get my razor blade out here and do it with, I think, better than the back of the, uh, better than the back of the painting brush because it, I, have, I can have sharper, this razor blade really gives nice sharp. If you get those areas that are just been painted, You'll get nice little white streaks back there. This stuff back here in the back, it's too dry. Nothing comes out. It just leaves it the same color. So uh, to scrape something out, you got to have it wet. And it can't be too wet or it fills back in. And these are just about right because it was just wet enough that I was able to scrape that paint out and leave what you see there. So, all right, let's see here. Um, put just a little more of this yellow back here in some of these. I don't know if it's even going to show up. Probably not. I think I'll just skip it. Lighten them up a little bit in some areas. They could be getting hit by sun back here in the back, which I think is kind of what I see in the photograph. I see some that are sort of lighter colors back here in the distance. So they're uh, getting some more sun on them than the ones in the foreground. So probably really hard for you to see that, but it's a subtle little thing that, that uh, looks good to me over here. There's some grass growing over this side, so let's just put some of that in. All right, soften that up just a little so I don't have a complete hard edge there. All right, I think I'm done with that. I'm done with all of this. Haven't done anything with my glacier yet. I'm going to come back and maybe put just a few marks in there to kind of give it to show the flow of the ice. Um, I'm going to get my bigger brush now. We're going to go in and start putting in some of these trees here that um, 
are in the foreground and uh, getting some my ochre I call this ochre it's quinacridone gold uh, which is a different color than ochre it's uh, doesn't have any opacity to it. it's really really transparent uh, get some green out going and uh, my blues my purples and uh, so I want these trees to really have a nice bluish green cast to them so with the different colors I've got here I can really hopefully make this work Let's see I don't know where that all came from uh, these are going to go up to about here somewhere in that area Ah, I just realized I didn't put my water in yet. Aha! Uh -huh. I want this water to go back and I want to paint these trees over the water. So I'm going to do all this painting here of these, a bunch of trees here. Put a lot of this, block a lot of this in and put some things on the top that look like they're trees. Um, just putting in a lot of paint right here. Um, let's see here, I want these to have a top on them so it looks like they're they are pine trees and they're not any other kind. All right, so these are bigger, now these are bigger, these are back farther, and these are back the farthest. So that's the look I'm trying to get with this. Over here, I got this big tree that's gonna go there. I'm gonna have this stuff on both sides of it. And here, I'm gonna have a bunch of these things going on. So let's just put it all in here. You can probably tell I'm not used to working with this type of paper. It's really uh, different. All right, um, before I go too much further, I'm gonna put this water in over here. Um, in this case, I'm gonna put some clear water on the, on the paper because I want it to blend again. I want it to be um, soft. I want it to run. And so I'm just kind of wetting this down. You can see I have a little green in my water that's no big deal don't worry about it um, so this is going to be wet and then I'm going to come back and put in my blue for the water which is a interesting color of blue um, it's got a little blue with green in it it looks like to me in some areas um, in this area here this is pretty much cobalt blue back here change the color put a little of my other blue in there to change it up just a little Let's see what happens when I do this hey it's a little different and it's since it's wet it's gonna just sort of merge together here Okay, there's my water really quick. Now, while that's still partly wet, I'm going to want to put some shadows in there. Some reflections, I should say. Those reflections are going to be these colors that I've been painting with here, like right in here. I'm going to have these something to come down here, pick up these blues and the purples and my greens. I'm going to come down a lot like they are up above. He's going to do the same here. I'll make that fairly dark.
And there's even probably <clears throat> a little bit of mountain uh, reflection down here. If I can get a little bit of that brownish color in here. I don't want too much of it. Uh, just a little bit. Sort of indicate I've got some mountain stuff going on here. Something like that. All right. <clears throat> now that's I'm going to kind of leave that alone, let that dry a little bit. I am going to see if I can swipe out a uh, lift out while this is still wet. Lift out a little bit of a white. There we go. Something like that. Something over here just to um, stuff doesn't lift off this paper too well. So I'm trying to do it while I've got that paper good and wet. All right, I think that's going to do. This is getting a little bit of a blossom. Let me fix that. All right, um, I think I'm going to go back now and work on these trees over here. So I got that out of the way. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to put some other trees over the top of that. So let's get going. How are we doing on time? 39 minutes. A little longer than I thought. <coughs> Big, I want to get plenty of paint out here because I'm going to need a lot. I want it to be uh, have all these colors in it the greens, the blues, the blacks, all this. So let's see, and I'm going to start with this guy right here and I'm going to put him in like right in here and see with these paints being transparent, they don't. Uh, they show through what's under them. So you got to be uh, have some fairly thick paint to make these look like um, paint over what's there. Actually, is what I'm trying to say. This one, is a nice size tree right in here. So it's a pretty good size tree. Right there, I got some interesting texture there in the middle with that has been running. Picked up some light. Actually comes all the way down, even further down. All right, so these don't have really big tops on them, big points. Okay, now we gotta do another one here. This one's really big. So, a lot of blue, purple, a lot of green. I don't want it to be too wet because I want it to go over what's there. A good way to test if you're, how wet your paint is, is if you put it in your palette, if you can run your finger through it and it leaves a mark like that, that means that's dry, wet paint, as best I can call it. If it runs back together, it's still pretty wet and runny. So when you want paint to go over other paint in watercolor using transparent watercolors, you want to uh, <clears throat> do a test like that to see if uh, how wet it is. And since I don't want this to kind of show up um, the, the uh, mountains and the stuff under behind it, behind it, I want this to be uh, good and dry, for lack of a better word. I want it to be drier than what uh, you would normally paint with if you're wanting it to uh, uh, show through like a tra like transparent watercolor is really good at. Um, in this case, I'm not trying for that because I'm putting these big old trees in. It's on hot pressed paper and it's kind of going every which way. I'm just kind of popping it down. Making some interesting marks here because of the way the paper deals with the paint. And 
and because I'm painting vertically, okay, makes an interesting set of things going on there. Um, I'm going to get out my other my uh, other flat brush and get some of this yellow. I want some yellow on these things to make them look like they've got uh, sun hitting over here on this edge over here. So some of these areas I'm going to pop in just a few areas of greenery or a yellow yellow uh, paint to give it that look of uh, getting some sunlight hitting on it. Way up here we got some. If you can see that that well, but it's uh, looking pretty decent here. Um, as long as this is still a little bit wet, I can get these colors on there, and it will hold and give me that sort of a rounded look. I'm trying to get a uh, a nice rounded. If you get three values on your on your painting, you can get a uh, nice rounded look out of it. So I've got some darks and I've got some mid-tones and I've got these lights. So I'm going to just touch this guy up a little bit here to sort of reinforce some of that. <clears throat> and I've got some more trees in here actually. While I'm at it. These are actually a little bit lighter. I'm going to try to put them in the background here if I can. And down here they kind of just run together because this is all a bunch of trees and stuff back here in the back anyway even over here I got some stuff going on up the side this one tree over here is almost out of the picture plane but I'm going to put him in down here sort of squiggle him in let him touch and overlap this other guy over there it's interesting how this paper reacts to my back and forth jiggles. It's really uh, interesting what I what kind of texture I got there with uh, just using these uh, pulling down and letting the wet react. Cover that up. There's a little bit more of a yellow I could put in here on this side. On this guy, I'm going to put some yellow on him as well. I'm just putting this over the wet paint this there. It kind of lightens them up and lets it look like there's some sun hitting in some areas that uh, would be actually it looks a lot like the, the painting. Should be some out here even maybe. Put a few light areas up here. All right. Okay, so that's the biggest part of that painting is done. Uh, Got a little bit of stuff to go on down here. Um, see if I can take my, some of my ochre maybe and yellow with a little green in it and see if I can pull up some grasses maybe. Kind of looks like grasses maybe. Those, uh, this brush is making it look like there's some grasses in there anyway. Over here, put a few more touches of uh, stuff in. Oh, I didn't put in my little trees over there. That's what I forgot. Get my flat brush out here, my half inch flat rather. <clears throat> and I'll put those in and I think, oh, other than touching up the, uh, that snow bank up above, that glacier area. These, I want these to come down. I want them to uh, show you the water behind them. So I'm going to leave these little gaps in here so that you can tell that I got some of these big trees here growing on this little strip of peninsula here. And uh, something like this is what I'm trying to get out of it, like that. And uh, our peninsula could use just a little more enhancement here to show his colors 
some of this green and brown in there, put a little bit over here, echo it over there, um, bring it around, even here, put in a few rocks maybe over here, this area could have a couple of rocks of some kind sitting here, this is really still too wet to put much in, but I'll do that, even this out a little bit. Um, Okay, and now this area up here above, now let me see an area I want to take out some of this white here. I got some areas that are too white, showing too much. It's not really snow back there now, it's uh, I can come in and put a few lines in here like this. They're not going to show in some of these, but maybe they'll show in a few of them. And I could put in, uh, actually use my uh, script liner and put some more trees in there. I um, think that's pretty good. I'm just going to take a little bit of my uh, Payne's Gray and put just some soft, wet, want it to be really wet. So this, in this case, if I want it to be wet, I want to run my finger through it and I want it to fill back in. You see that? I don't know if you can see that there, but when I run my finger through it, it fills back in because it's still good and wet. If I put more paint in there, it's going to dry, it's going to make it drier and make it not fill back in. But up here, let's see how this is going to react. I'm going to put some water in here just to uh, give me a little bit of a, something to work with in some of these areas. Yeah, that's good enough. Let's see what happens here if I put just a little. Over here, touching a few spots that make it look like there's some snow maybe sitting over here. Even these areas down here, I could put a few things that look like shadows or something, so they're not just pure stark white. I really want the focal point to be the area up here. Take out some of this white just a little bit. So that just tones it down just a little bit so it's not overly white. Okay, so I think my Putting this in and letting it run a little bit is fine. Snow really is rarely totally white. It's always got reflections from the sky. It's got some of the blue from the sky or some of the brown from the mountains showing in it. But uh, so it has a little bit of a tone to it. Uh, but when you're trying to depict a glacier, you want it to something like that. Okay, I think just threw my brush on the floor. I won't use that one anymore for today. All right, um, just a couple of uh, things with my script liner here. Let's put a few things in that look like we've got some trunks in these trees, maybe. Um, maybe some. Uh, Things that kind of gum up all the grasses here. Uh, okay, something like this. Um, this rock here, I uh, really want him to have a little more definition, so I'm going to put a little darker side on him. Maybe. Paint's not too too wet. Yeah, that kind of shows there's a couple of things going on over here. Bottom should be, I want to close this bottom off. Yeah, something like that. There we go. So I've got a little change of color tone in there. A few grasses that are growing up. I won't quit. See, that's my problem. I gotta learn how to stop. Here, put a few, few strokes of uh, trees and that sort of thing. 
All right, um, name is last thing I'm going to put on here, so I'm going to get that going. I think this is dry enough over here for my name. As I sign this, I'll be done. All right, right here. Can't see that, see? That's how I like to put my name, so it's very hard. You have to almost walk right up on it to see it. All right, folks, um, I think I have uh, done about everything I intended to do here. And I hope you like that. I hope you give this a try. Um, it's instead of mountains in Calgary. And uh, I think it's been uh, a lot of fun to try this, both in watercolor and oil. And my challenge today, of course, was using this uh, hot press paper, which uh, I almost never use. I really never tried it vertically like this. I've used it flat. but uh, <clears throat> So anyway, this is uh, a good experiment for, I've got a bunch of this paper that I've, I've had sent to me because it, uh, they were trying to replace the cold press and it wasn't that. So I've got a bunch of sheets. So I may try this again with some other, uh, other uh, scenes. Um, so I think that's all I want to say today. So please share this video with your friends if you like my work and uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, please. And uh, hit the little bell button next to the subscriber button and you will be notified when I upload new videos. And uh, check out my website, check out my Facebook page and my Patreon site. And uh, I think until I see you again, I'll say, uh, it's Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.